hello everyone welcome to the xt summit uh, and thank you for being around uh, for listening to my talk uh, today we will be talking about infrastructure and how you can apply agile practices to enhance your current infrastructure pro provisioning workflow and make it easier for the dev and the ops team to collaborate i don't know in what direction but this is quite a jump from the recent talks by bumika and somya so let's go ahead so to experience this topic uh, i just wanted to tell you a story a story of a team who are stru struggling with their current infrastructure by the way i'm ankur and i'm part of the xt team i'm an architect and i've been with ps uh, for 4 years now i have worked across multiple domains and in challenging roles tapping everything that happens from inception of sales to delivery please scan the qr code to connect with me on linkedin or hit me up on my twitter handle to connect so before we proceed a couple of things to clarify uh, we are in no way covering everything that comes under the umbrella of infrastructure provisioning workflow but hopefully this session will enable you to explore more and realize the potential of applying agile practices to your current infrastructure so we'll be seeing through the eyes of monica and claire who are working in a product based company and they are part of a small team the team is lean and great and they have always uh, they have recently switched in a, a small team structure they are although still scared of deployments even though they have switched to agile practices the new team structure still is not as fruitful as they expected their lead and cycle times are still high due to uh, how their current on premise infrastructure is managed so let's see what happens so this is uh, this is the kind uh, of a struggle they are they are going through so we'll be seeing through the eyes of monica and claire who are working uh, uh, in the company as i said so as they are working agile practices they wanted to release features fast uh, due to the rigid infrastructure they are not able to test their features they are not able to test their features in an actual environment until very late in the game more often than not they discover bugs pretty late which eventually delay their release cycles and deprive them of critical feedback from their design counterparts having no documentation also does not help which results in them being scared to touch their current infrastructure let's see if they can solve their problems before that uh, so an opportunity comes knocking at their door their company cto announces that their strategy to migrate all of their current products to aws the product owner shares this news with the team as soon as the news is shared the current uh, the team gets to work to decide on their architecture so after quite a uh, quite a bit of drilling this is the architecture they came up with don't worry about it uh, don't worry about the details just remember that there are few components uh, that they have to build uh, as part of their production infrastructure so while monica who knows uh, and is a devops engineer knows about cloud she sure uh, she sure that they can fall into the same of a set of struggles even though they're not cautious about how they want to manage their cloud cloud infrastructure she knows creating environment is usually a click of buttons and later on it is difficult to figure out how everything is built and managed so she grabs clear uh, from the front end team who share similar interests to figure out the possible strategies to manage their infrastructure in the quest of finding better tools to manage their infrastructure they stumble upon some blogs where they read about storing infrastructure as code both monica and claire were super excited to discover this gem as they were hopeful that such tools can solve their problems they couldn't wait to apply what they discovered to practice so uh, monica was a little aware about the tools like ansible chef and puppet they are configuration management tools their responsibility lies in managing softwares and apps on their existing infrastructure so this is an important detail so the, uh, the tools that are being displayed on the screen are used to manage softwares and applications on their existing infrastructure so what they were looking for was slightly different the way uh, uh, they were actually trying to find out uh, tools which can help to manage and allocate cloud resources dynamically there are multiple infrastructure provisioning tools using which you can actually create and manage any resource like load balancers databases network configuration etc 
cloud formation terraform and polumi are some of the popular ones and these are the tools which you can uh, through which you can actually create and maintain your current infrastructure so why let's see why uh, managing your infrastructure as code makes sense so modern infrastructure is dynamic in nature and is multi cloud storing it uh, as code makes perfect sense and it is repeatable as well how often do you want a prod like environment to test your features in as its code you can just create one more instance of the same infrastructure code gives a sense of declarativeness that, that is good and no denying that as its code all the awesome software development practices automatically apply to as well be it version control or agile workflows and you can easily create ephemeral and short living environments uh, so that you don't end up eating your infrastructure resources which will save you from unnecessary resource utilization code also means that it it enables you to write tests and why uh, so testing is always awesome and if you can test your infrastructure uh, that would be a great capability to have so monik and claire were ecstatic to know about the advantages and they couldn't wait to move ahead as they discovered tools like cloud formation pulumi and terraform they started to like terraform as it provides support for multiple cloud providers drives infrastructure as immutable entities and is declarative in nature so as they studied uh, through the blogs and the quest of learning more about the tool they uh, understood that they of terraform has four primary stages um uh, let's take an example of a creation of an ephemeral environment so what terraform essentially does is it initializes and installs dependencies if any it then creates an execution plan and does all the possible validation checks so that you can see what is being added or altered then comes apply which applies the changes to achieve the desired state of the configuration and yes uh your config uh, your infrastructure is man managed as a huge state object which is dynamically generated by terraform itself the outcome of apply is uh, the creation and updation of the state and the fourth phase eventually will be the de destruction of all the resources that apply created it will also update the state while there is more to terraform as tool there are some key components uh, that monica and clear realized that they needed to immediately understand and nail let's have a look at what they discovered and tried so first is providers providers refers to your infrastructure service provider it can be vms physical machines or your internet service providers uh, uh, cloud providers like aws azure gcp etc terraform has its core engine which acts like a common binding force each provider has a, its own set of libraries which are imported at the time of initialization so uh, so pretty straight forward so this is how we declare an aws provider pretty straight forward the supported keys of a code block can be referenced also via documentation so next comes resources let's uh, see how uh, how a resource block looks like so uh, so uh, i'm just navigating to uh, my uh, load balancer declaration where i have created a load load balancer the declarative model aesthetic is similar to that kind of a pro, uh, that of a provider that is a declaration with a bunch of key names in terraform a resource is a block that describes one or more infrastructure objects like a load balancer in this case next comes backend backend is where you store uh, where your st state file goes a backend can be a remote storage system like an s3 bucket but you have multiple other options and any remote storage is highly recommended and this is how an empty uh, dynamically generated state looks like uh, it's auto versioned and maintained by terraform the terraform state which is generally dynamic is an object which keeps track of your current infrastructure while you can maintain the state locally it's important that the state should be remotely managed to enhance collaboration then comes modules modules are uh, pretty self explanatory we can arrange small code blocks contextually at each uh, and each can be exposed and used as a module a module has essentially three types 
as you can see on the left uh, of the screen. And this is a uh, standard that usually a module structure follows in Terraform. So the main file uh, is where you declare the resource. Uh, the set of variables, the second file is the set of variables which are actually inputs and are expected by a module. And the output, which is essentially the return value after the execution is completed. Let's move on uh, and see how a module is called. This is one of the uh, one of the again uh, module declare, uh, declaration that I've uh, just created, and this is an ECS service uh, that I've created uh, as part of my module declaration. The way you organize your code, reusability and consistency is important, and you can achieve both using out of the box or custom created modules. Let's move back to our presentation and see what's next. So let's quickly revise what we actually went through. So we talked about providers. Providers refers to your infrastructure service provider. Uh, resource is a block that describes one or more infrastructure objects, for example, a load balancer. A state is something that is dynamically generated and which keeps track of your current infrastructure. Backend is where you configure where your state file goes. And modules helps you to organize your code in smaller and reusable chunks. You can use and leverage out of the box or your custom created modules as and when needed. After understanding the key components of Terraform, Monica and Claire try to replicate their current architecture, which we just went through in the beginning of the slides, and created a sample React app to test. the scaffold in an app using a template and added a simple change to it, as you can see on your screens. Uh, the change is then pushed and create uh, a pull request is created. As you can see, we have uh, pushed a change just to test out uh, the power of infrastructure as code. So we have also created GitHub Actions workflow, which creates an ephemeral environment, which is absolutely broad like. The workflow is triggered as soon as the pull request is created. When we navigate to the workflow details, we can see all the steps that are being executed. These are essentially same sequence of steps that we talked about in our previous slides. In our, in, uh, as you can see, uh, in the apply phase, we can see, uh, see our resources being provisioned one by one. Terraform is intelligent to detect if any one of the resource is dependent on the other. Let's see uh, if uh, what has happened. So as you can see, and the apply command has created an elastic container registry to push our Docker images to. So these essentially are the application images that you will push to your custom registry and that registry will be dynamically created. Let's see. Uh, and the, and the current, uh, and it is currently in the pro uh, process of provisioning a load balancer uh, with the given configuration. In the same way, other infrastructure resources will be provisioned. Coming back to our GitHub workflow, we can see that the apply command was successful and the infrastructure needed is up and running. You can also see that the URL is also given as an output to the workflow. Let's quickly check. Uh, let's quickly check what is the state of our application cluster. As you can see, it is provisioned and has a couple of pending tasks. That because that there is nothing to run yet. Let's go back to see the uh, status of our app build that is currently running. We build and dockerize the application and push the build image to the registry, which runs and is utilized by our e ECS cluster. After the build is a success, we uh, used a small plugin to post a comment on the pull request with the build uh, related details for ease of access. When we open the environment link this was that was just provisioned, we can see our changes pretty easily. This is super awesome. A full blown prod like environment was created and an application hosted on it in under five minutes. Let's quickly have a look at the state file in our bucket. This is the place where uh, our state file uh, state is uh, stored. <coughs> Sorry. 
every environment will carry its own state file. As you can see, the resources and the other relevant details are maintained and updated here. So, so as soon as we are done and dusted with this and we have tested our changes, let's go back to our main branch and merge our changes. So as soon as we merge our changes, a new workflow to destroy the environment is created. After the workflow is completed, a comment is posted on the GitHub pull request. As you can see, the uh, environment is being destroyed. And a notification for the environment destroy is also, uh, also posted to GitHub. Let's quickly have a look at the state file and see if all the state resources are gone. And this is our environment, right? So uh, which was up and running before and it has been destroyed and the site is no longer working. Opening our state file, uh, all the resources in our state file are also gone. So capabilities like these can prove to be really powerful as you can build and test features early in the game. We can provide such environmental links to our design team and gather feedback in real time when feature development is going on. This model complements rapid prototyping really well. This can be one of the few advantages of storing infrastructure as code. Coming back to our story, and Monica and Claire were super pumped after uncovering such capabilities. So they shared their findings and the uh, POC that they did with the team members. Everyone was excited and we're on board. So as part of the demo, we saw how infrastructure as code can solve the problems we went through in the beginning. So we have taken care of all the problems that Monica and Claire's team were facing uh, before they started on this quest. So fast forward a few months, everyone in the company realized the potential of storing infrastructure as code, and it made the team more agile than ever before. So in the world uh, where rapid prototyping, automation, and fast release cycles are critical, it's very important that infrastructure provisioning workflow becomes more flexible to supply a supplement the demand at which uh, the agile development expects. Shifting infrastructure to the left is the need of the hour and can empower every engineer to release features even faster. I would try to uh, I would try to connect uh, this thought with Tom's and Vinod's uh, message on design systems. So the core essence of those talks as well was to get things very early in the game and uh, make things very flexible. And they what they talked about was an overlap between the dev and the design teams. And those overlaps are very critical for collaboration and cross integration of the skill set and the teams. And this is, that is the same mindset we need to have for uh, our ops teams and our dev teams as well. Let's quickly go through the key takeaways of the session. So you can, as soon as you store uh, uh, your infrastructure as code, you can scale elegantly. Your faster delivery, uh, your uh, software delivery cycles will, will be even faster. It will encourage tight collaboration between the infra and the dev teams. You can create consistent environments. You don't have to worry about uh, whether uh, uh, to wait for features to test on the environments later. And you can create your own ephemeral environments and create your own workflows even in your local and test it then and there. You can also, uh, one thing which we didn't cover, uh, you can actually create environment specific workplaces so that you can replicate dev, prod, and staging like environments through different infrastructural configurations. And it is very, very easy to maintain as it's code. That brings me to the end of the talk. Uh, the code that was, uh, I was uh, demoing, you can scan the URL and have a look at it. Even though it's not in a polished state I, as I want it to be, but you can get a clear idea. I have kept the React application as well as the infrastructure in the same repository for ease of access. And you can just have a look at those uh, and see what's happening. Thank you.